Hi, my name is Mr. Peck from Ideas Inc. School and we are here today to talk about acids and bases. This chapter is a continuation from chemical changes. During chemical changes, we explored the different types of acidic reactions. Here is a quick recap. When a metal reacts with an acid, a salt and hydrogen gas are produced. For instance, the metal magnesium reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. A quick note, not all metals can react with dilute acids. Metals like copper, silver, gold, and platinum are too unreactive to react with acids. When a metal carbonate reacts with an acid, a salt, carbon dioxide gas, and water are produced. For instance, sodium carbonate reacts with nitric acid to produce sodium nitrate, carbon dioxide gas, and water. The last two types of acidic reactions are known as neutralization reactions. When a metal oxide reacts with an acid, a salt and water are produced. For instance, potassium oxide reacts with sulfuric acid to produce potassium sulfate and water. Similarly, when a metal hydroxide reacts with an acid, a salt and water are produced. For instance, when copper 2 hydroxide reacts with sulfuric acid, copper 2 sulfate and water are produced. Let's begin the chapter with acids. An acid is a compound that dissociates in aqueous solution to produce hydrogen ions that impart acidic properties. There are two types of acids, organic acids and mineral acids. Organic acids are weak acids that only partially dissociate in aqueous solution to produce a lower concentration of hydrogen ions. Here are some examples of organic acids. Vinegar is also known as ethanoic acid. Milk contains lactic acids. Citric acid can be found in citrus fruits. Tartaric acid can be found in grapes and pineapples. Vitamin C pills contain ascorbic acid. On the other hand, mineral acids are strong acids that fully dissociate to produce a higher concentration of hydrogen ions. Here are some examples of mineral acids. They are hydrochloric, sulfuric, nitric, and phosphoric acid. For the chemical formula of these acids, please pause the audio and refer to the notes. Next, we will talk about the properties and uses of acids. Due to the presence of hydrogen ions that impart acidic properties, number one, acids taste sour. Number two, acids are corrosive. Number 3. Their pH value is less than 7. Number 4. Acids are good conductors of electricity due to the presence of mobile ions. And lastly, number 5. Acids turn moist blue litmus paper red. We will discuss more about indicators later on in this chapter. Some common uses of acids in our daily lives include sulfuric acid being used in car batteries, using vinegar to preserve food, nitric acid plays an important role in producing fertilizers, and we can find carbonic acid in our fizzy drinks. Now on to the next part of this chapter. In this section, we will be discussing about bases and alkalis. The differences between a base and an alkali are confusing, so please pay extra attention. A base is a compound that is either a metal oxide or a metal hydroxide. This base can react with acids in a neutralization reaction to produce a neutral mixture of salt and water. However, not all bases can call themselves alkalis. Only when a base is soluble in aqueous solution will it become an alkali. In essence, an alkali is a subset of the larger family of bases. Therefore, please take note that an alkali can only be a soluble metal hydroxide that can dissociate in aqueous solution to produce hydroxide ions that impart alkaline properties. Unfortunately, bases that cannot dissolve in aqueous solutions will not have alkaline properties due to the lack of these hydroxide ions. And just like acids, there are weak and strong alkalis. Weak alkalis only partially dissociate in aqueous solution to produce a lower concentration of hydroxide ions. A famous example of a weak alkali is aqueous ammonia. We can find ammonia mainly in cleaning and degreasing products. A strong alkali on the other hand will fully dissociate in aqueous solution to produce a higher concentration of hydroxide ions. Examples of strong alkalis include all group 1 metal hydroxides like sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. Due to the presence of hydroxide ions, alkalis have the following properties. Number 1. Alkalis taste bitter. Number 2. Alkalis feel slippery and soapy. Number 3. Their pH is above 7. Number 4. Just like acids, alkalis are good conductors of electricity due to the presence of mobile ions. And lastly, alkalis turn moist red litmus paper blue. Now we will learn a new chemical reaction that is unique to alkalis. Alkalis, also known as a metal hydroxide, will react with ammonium compounds to produce a salt, ammonia gas, and water. For instance, sodium hydroxide will react with ammonium chloride to produce sodium chloride, ammonia gas, and water. Also, please recall the test for ammonia gas. Since ammonia is a pungent gas that is also alkaline, we can test for it using a moist red litmus paper. If ammonia is present, the red litmus paper will turn blue. 
In the next part of the chapter, we will be talking about the various kinds of indicators. We have already heard about litmus paper. Litmus solution will turn red in acidic pH ranges and turn blue in alkaline pH ranges. The next popular indicator is the universal indicator. This indicator will change color depending on the pH levels. In a neutral environment, the indicator turns green. As the pH decreases from 7 to 1, the color changes from green to yellow to orange and finally red which indicates a very strong acid. But as the pH increases from 7 to 14, the color changes from green to blue to a darker blue and finally purple which indicates a very strong alkali. Here are three other indicators that you might find in a lab. Methyl orange will turn red in acidic solutions and turn yellow in alkali. Phenolphthalein is an indicator that is colorless in acidic solutions but turns pink in alkali. Thymol blue is another indicator that turns yellow in acidic solutions but turns blue in alkali. Please note that different indicators will change colors at different thresholds. However, these breakpoints will be provided in the question, so memorizing them will not be necessary. We have come to the last part of the chapter. In this section, we will be discussing a case study of the farmer's problem. You can pause the audio and refer to the notes for a clearer understanding. Let's begin. A farmer that wants to grow green beans as his only crop. However, this type of bean can only grow well in neutral soil. Now, imagine the following scenario. Scenario 1. The farmer found out that his soil is too acidic, probably due to acid rain as his farm is located near a power station. In order to neutralize the acid in the soil, the farmer chose to spray excess alkali all over his farmland. This gives rise to two problems. Problem 1. When excess alkali is added, all the acid in the soil will be fully neutralized. However, the alkali that is left over will inevitably cause the pH of the soil to increase further past the neutral pH of 7. As a result, the soil ends up being too alkali and the green beans will not grow. Problem 2. When alkali is added, it will react with any ammonium fertilizers present in the soil. This reaction releases ammonia gas and thus the soil loses its precious nitrogen content. And the nutrient level of the soil decreases. Now consider scenario number 2. In this scenario, the farmer chose to add excess metal carbonate to his acidic soil instead. A good example is to add excess calcium carbonate, also known as limestone. Why is this a better solution? The excess calcium carbonate added will fully neutralize all the acid found in the soil. And we need not worry about any leftover calcium carbonate because this compound is insoluble in water. Being insoluble, calcium carbonate will not dissociate in water to produce any hydroxide or hydrogen ions that impart alkaline and acidic properties respectively. Thus, the pH of the soil will remain neutral even after all the acid has been neutralized. But what if the soil is too alkaline instead? This problem seldom arises because fertilizers often contain ammonium compounds like ammonium nitrate. And ammonium compounds can react with any alkali present in the soil to produce a salt, ammonia gas and water, thus neutralizing the soil in the process. We have come to the end of this chapter. If you have any doubts, please approach Mr. Peck. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.